Merry Christmas to you, Pat Hoffman, along with Randy Schiffman, IPFW Basketball, once again on UPN Fort Wayne. Tonight, the Dons taking on the Weber State Wildcats. And Randy, the last time the Dons were in this building, yeah. a thrilling night came up a little bit short against Notre Dame. Yeah, 9,000 people in here and to lose on a last second shot. They had a chance to win it down two and had the ball and didn't do it. And then playing at Purdue a couple nights after that and also losing a tough game. The thing the Dons have to guard against tonight is a bit of a letdown because you play Notre Dame, Purdue, two big names, Weber State, not as big a name. How do the Dons try to build off that game with Notre Dame? Well, I think what they have to do is Dane Fife has said it all year long. They're not going to beat people on talent. They're not going to beat people on size. They have to beat them on effort, especially on the defensive end. Weber State, a team that has had a lot of recent success. This year, though, four and six. They just snapped a six-game losing streak, so they at least bring some momentum into this game tonight. Again, they have a couple of good players, Corrick Biggs and also David Patton. Those are the two guys to watch for. However, you've got to hope, hey, these guys are from Utah, and they're thinking, it's Christmas break. We want to be at home, and sometimes that'll happen. A team is looking ahead to doing something else, and the Downs really hope to catch them looking ahead to their holiday. Well, we're looking ahead to hopefully a great game, and hopefully, from our perspective, of an IPFW win. Randy and I will be back with the starting lineups and more when we come back. You're watching IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. This broadcast is a production of College 56 at IPFW in conjunction with UPN Fort Wayne. I heard they did against Purdue. Welcome back once again to the Coliseum. Pat Hoffman and Randy Shippen along with you tonight. Moments away from tip-off, IPFW and Weber State. Let's quickly take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for the Weber State Wildcats, they come in with a 4-6 and six record, Randy. They've won their first three games, lost six in a row, did come in with a win. Uh, they're coached by Joe Cravens. Right, they won two nights ago at uh, Southern Utah. And they won that one by 13. So both teams struggling a bit. The Don's two and seven right now. Leading scorer Corrick Riggs. He's a six foot four inch senior. Averages 15 points and eight rebounds. Coming in off a 23 point game. Their point guard Nick Covington really makes him go. The other starters: Nadim Pajovic, David Patton, and Terrell Stovall. There you see the starting five. And Dane Fife told me a couple days ago that Riggs is really the guy they're worried about. He's the guy who makes him go. Very very athletic wing player. And Patton, they say every time he touches the ball, he's going to try to. Dunk it, so that'll be interesting. As for IPFW, same starting five that we've become used to, with one exception. There will be Kyle Savely getting the start. He's normally the spark plug right. coming off the bench. He's going to get the start instead of Brad Pompey at the point guard. He'll be joined by DeWitt Scott, Quentin Carruthers, Kyle Savely, as we said, and Tyler Best. And Tyler Best, Pat played it. He's been playing really well the last couple three weeks and played extremely well in his hometown against Purdue a couple of nights ago. Had a terrific game, 15 points, and did a really nice job inside against Purdue's big guys, Matt Kiefer, and, uh, Nate Manoy, and some of those others. One thing Dane Five really looking forward to tonight, or, or hopeful, I should say, is a good start. The Dons right. have been plagued the last two games. They trailed Notre Dame 8-zip. It was 9-zip against Purdue, and five times this year they've been in a 7-0 hole to start ball games. Only twice this year have they gotten off to a good start, and that would be against uh, Southeast Missouri on the road, and they won that game. They also went Michigan State. Remember, they got off to a very good start, and they stayed in that game most of the way. So good start could wind up in a good finish for the Dons. 
Opening tap controlled by the Weber State Wildcats. They will have the first possession. And they take it inside and quickly an easy two for Nick Covington. And certainly not a good quick start, but the Dons see if they can get it on their end. But the ball knocked out of bounds and a turnover on IPFW. Quentin Carruthers flat out dribbled that one off his foot. And the cut that we just saw that's on the scouting report. The Dons say that uh, the Wildcats are going to do the cuts all night, and that's something they really have to guard against. So keep looking for that because they're going to try to create easy baskets underneath the Wildcats. Pajovic, little turnaround. Six foot nine inch junior gets the bucket. It's quickly four nothing. We talk about it, we talk right. about it, five preaches about it, but it, it just is just one of those things that has plagued this basketball team. We're only 40 seconds into the game. They're down four zip. And coach said the last, uh, it seems like every game actually, that they have to call timeout early to just to regroup. And he goes, hey guys, Remember that the game's actually started. Of course, it's one of those things sometimes you talk about it and talk about it hoping it doesn't happen, but sometimes that puts it in their head. And hey, let's there stop talking about it. Clinton Carruthers with the bucket. You it's did the reverse two. jinx there, Pat. The reverse jinx. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Cordy, that's a, I think Coach Fudge just gave you a thumbs up. 4-2, <laughs> the score outside the arc. We got a foul away for the basketball. Going to be called on Kyle Savely underneath. And there's a guy who they don't want to get in foul trouble. He has been the energizer bunny of this team all season long. Has done a great job off the bench. He hasn't started, but he's he started second half sometimes, and he's gotten into some games early. Well, the point guard, you don't see him normally score two buckets inside this early, but Nick Covington, just six feet one, gets the basket in close. 6-2 start for Weber State. Yeah, but at 6-1, he's got two or three inches on Kyle Saver. So it's not a bad move to post him up. DeWitt Scott with a three won't go. The big fella <laughs> underneath. As for mentioned safely, can't hit the fall away. And Pajovic comes down with a rebound. Six feet, he gets up there for the rebound. Yeah, though. he had eight rebounds against Mary Grove. Not bad for a six-footer. David Generously Patton, the second leading scorer, averaging about 12 a game, misses inside, but Riggs with the rebound, and he gets the easy bunny. Well, that was the, one of those, look what I found shots. How about this? Four out of five from the floor right now for the Wildcats. Don's one out of three. The defensive-minded Dane Fife will not like that. Well, Pat, where have all the shots been? About a foot away. <laughs> You're going to make most of those. Ball knocked out of bounds. Oh, they called a foul on that one. The foul's on number 21. Pajovic. Pajovic. DeWitt Scott off the inbounds, hits the little baseline. Jay, he was in foul trouble against Purdue. Good to see him to get off of a quick start. He also didn't score a point in the first half against Purdue, and he's the leading scorer on the team, so I thought you might see a couple plays run for him early, try to get him off, and that was a beautifully run play right there. He took a three-point shot earlier, but wasn't really off the play. He was just open. That was almost a trap. Wide open three from the outside, and knocking it down is David Patton. Bit of a state liking these rims. Yeah, a bit of a surprise there because Patton, they say, is the guy who tries to drive every time he touches the ball. He was very patient and took the three. Looks like 21. Uh, he just picked up his second foul there, Pivot. And he is the six foot nine inch junior. And he's quickly uh, going to the bench. Two fouls in the first two minutes and 40 seconds. And we've got Clint Burris coming in. Pat, I was watching this guy warm up. <laughs> Come on, does he look like he's 42 years old or what? <laughs> you tell him that. <laughs> Either that or he's uh, Mr. Clean's son. <laughs> Again, you tell him that too. <laughs> he's a lot bigger than me. I can say that from here. He can't even. <laughs> uh, his assistant coach is about four feet away. So he's like, you might want to watch yourself. <laughs> I'm talking quiet. <laughs> An 11-4 hole. The Mastodons trail it by seven. We're less than three minutes into the ball game. And the four points early, really not bad for the Dons, but giving up 11 in under three minutes, not good at all. So much for the uh, little jet lag for Weber State making the trip all the way from Utah. Savely, his second offensive rebound of the night. That's more than some big guys get in the game, and then he just fumbles it out of bounds. Went off the foot of Justin Hawkins, got a drop down there. A little frustration for IPFW. They just need something good to happen, something to get that spark. The one thing they don't want to do is kind of be in that funk for the entire first half. Right. And that, too, that turnover, the coaches have talked about that a lot, too. They're, you know, there are good turnovers and there are not good turnovers, and that was an unforced turnover, and the Dons have had a lot of those this year. Just sloppy ball handling. Tyler Best going to be whistled for the personal underneath. And I still think, Pat, psychologically, this is a tough game for the Dons. You, know, you play Notre Dame in front of 9,000 on Sunday. You go to Purdue. 
playing Mackey and for a guy like Tyler Best who grew up in Lafayette, I mean, that was huge and they played so well. Again, there's that backdoor cut wide open. David Bat with nobody on him. 13 to 4. Well, Dane Five trying to, uh, I read uh, somewhere he called this the IPFW Christmas tournament, trying to pump yeah. his team up. <laughs> And they're looking for the early Christmas gift. You sometimes wonder when a team has traveled all the way from Utah to come here for this one game right before the holidays when the kids are on break, their minds might be elsewhere. Well, right now, they're really focused on playing basketball. The Wildcats with a 13-4 lead. We said they had a six-game losing streak but snapped it earlier this week, just two days ago. Yep, one at Southern Utah. Out for the three, Savely, that one off the mark. Rebound knocked out. It's going to be another easy layup for Covington. And he gets the jam. Nick Covington's third bucket of the game. Here comes the 30-second timeout. You can't have five guys crashing the offensive boards, and that's what happened on that last shot by IPFW. Tyler Best tipped it, but uh, the Downs weren't able to control it. And... Um, just set up an easy shot for for Covington, you know, and that that's good playing there because your coaches will tell you if you're on top and there's a shot go up, you can't get back into the rebound when you're playing defense. Release, go to the offensive offensive end. That's exactly what Nick Covington did, and he gets the stuff. We're very early on in this uh, game, Randy, but Weaver State shooting seven out of eight from the field. Yeah, eighty-eight percent. And again, we you know we talked about it. What about forty seconds into the broadcast, Pat? The game five has had to take an early timeout in every game, and he had to do it here because if there were a dead ball, they would be getting the media timeout right now, and that's what he was hoping for, but it wasn't coming at a certain point. You gotta stop the bleeding. Brad Pompey checks into the game for Savely. Trying to get it into best. And now we get that media timeout. We'll take a break. So far, it's all Weaver State 15 4, our score. We'll be right back. You're watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Again, 15-4, Weaver State with the early advantage, and Weaver State, uh, coached by Joe Cravens, has had a lot of success at that school. 114 wins, 83 losses coming in uh, to the season in his sixth year out there in uh, Utah. I've been Utah. And Pat, here's the disturbing trend early on. The Dons, two out of six, not too bad, but zero out of three from three-point line. So half their shots are threes. There's another turnover. And uh, they're just taking too many three-pointers. I think Hawkins picked up the charge. Nice play by Justin Hawkins there. But this has happened, Pat. The last three or four games, the Dons are taking more threes than two in the first half. They make the adjustment at halftime and get aggressive and take the ball in the lane, and they score. Meanwhile, Weber State is seven out of eight. Just one three-point shot and made it. The other six shots, the six that they made, all layups. Dons with the uh, shot by DeWitt Scott, and he knocks down the three. Let's see if that charge by Hawkins helps sparks this team, because that looked to be clearly an easy layup at the yeah. other end. Instead, it turns around, Dons come back get the other three. Yeah, it would have been another easy layup, and at least Dons get the uh, lead under double digits here. And underneath, Burris. Looked like he took an extra step there, because I don't know how he made it from one side of the basket to the other without dribbling. Carruthers, spin move in the lane, too hard, off the rim. Biggs had it, now Burris with it, outlet to Covington. Dons need to get back a little quicker on defense. 
Three from the outside, no. Good box out by Hawkins with the rebound. Don's go to a zone on that possession. Yeah, they're going to play some 2 3 zone tonight. They played it the other night at Purdue, and it worked very well. And that was a good no call there by the refs. They could have called Patton over the back, but it really had no effect on the play. Don't think they're going to count the basket on that one. They're going to call the foul on the floor. Tyler Best with a good move there. Yeah, he looked very aggressive and strong. We saw a lot of that in the second half against Purdue. Three subs checking in for Weber State. That is purple they're wearing, right? Yes, you that know is I'm purple. a little colorblind. <laughs> Sometimes little. purple looks blue to me. Chauncey Shelton checking in. Uh, good to get Covington out of there. That point guard has been fantastic in the early going for Weber State. Carruthers to Best. He'll take three and knock it down. So you don't have a problem taking so many threes as long as you make them. You know, but that's good news, <laughs> bad news, Pat. I was about to say, yeah, they're two out of five now. They've hit two threes in a row, but then sometimes you start making them and you fall in love with the three, and that's all you take. Again, they've taken nine shots at the IPFW Macedons. Five of them are three pointers. Cut the lead down to seven. Biggs, the, the one thing is, Biggs hasn't done much because they've had this early advantage. No, their guards Riggs, like to drive, say. though, don't they? DeWitt Scott going to be called for the charge. Now that was some good acting right there. That should have just been a no call. They barely touched. I don't know if we can get a look at that one again, but boy, there was, I mean, that was right in front of us and there was almost no contact at all. Dan Henry. There you go. See him coming up. I mean, come on, he fell down uh, because he knew Scott was just going to the spot. And I would say the same thing if it was the other way. <laughs> I would. 17-10 our score. We are early on in the first half. There's Harris, a walk. And he, got, he had that step before. They didn't see it. They did catch it that time. Well, you got four subs out there right now for Weber State. This is a time where IPFW should be taking a bit of advantage of it. Now, one problem with the Dons, you know, a lot lately, they've only been going with six players. You better be in shape if you're going to play for Dane Fife. Exactly. Well, I mean, uh, we took in some practices before uh, the season. They certainly do like to work on conditioning. Tapped away. Good hustle by Burris. Uh, where's his teammates? Now Hawkins is there to pick it up, and he'll be fouled. Well, that's a bit of a bailout right there for the Dons, because you know, even if he picks that ball up cleanly, it was 15 on the shot clock. By the time they got it across and would have gotten into their offense, there only would have been about eight seconds to go. So that's a bit of a break for the Dons. That's also 16 fouls on Weber State, so the Dons should get some free throw opportunities. That can help a lot if you're making your free throws. Yeah. So the Dons have shot them pretty well this year. Yeah, 72% coming into the game. That's pretty good. They're starting five, especially doing pretty well. Yeah. Best in traffic, and he'll get another dude. Nice move inside. Remember last year, Pat, the Dons were, what, about 60% from the line? Not very good at all. Lead cut down to five. I think it was up to 13 at one point. Yeah, and that's why Patton's getting ready to come back in. One of the big guys. And uh, here comes your man, Nick Covington, too. And there's another lay. Riggs with the drive and the up and under. That's got to be eight layups already for the Wildcats. Pompey launches a quick three, won't go, and a couple of Weber State players fight over it, but Riggs comes up with it. They almost turned it over. Dan Henry with it now. We're in the corner, three on the way from Cox, and he knocks it down. I'll tell you what, they love shooting in this place. 10 out of 13 right now for Weber State, 77%. And two out of three from behind the arc, so they're not, uh, they're hitting the layups and the outside shots. Pat, teams don't shoot 77% from the line. Three that time won't go. Hawkins rebound, put back, and the foul. Great play by Justin Hawkins. He is. If they have a Mr. Hustle, just put him down for that every year. If they have a Mr. Hustle award on IPFW. He's had a couple of plays, but we'll see if that'll be another one that sparks him. Hey, put, good on the defensive end. He hustled back. Now look at him just sneak in between two players, get it, the good shot fake. Not much of a foul there, I'll tell you what. I think that this is a bonus free throw, and that foul puts Weber State over the limit, too. That's seven already on the Wildcats, only three on the downs. You know, Pat, though, Sometimes when a lot of fouls are called on one team early, the refs start making up for it later. It just seems like that's, you know, nature, to, you know, human nature to do that. Hawkins gets the free throw to fall. He's been hitting them at 75% this year. Lead again at seven points. Don's back in that 2-3 zone. It's just weird seeing them play zone. You know, Dane Fife loves the man playing in Indiana. His dad played man uh, in high school. His dad coached up in Clarkson, Michigan. He played for him there. Mr. Basketball in 1998. 
Three from the corner, and I tell you what, the man who got off the plane just playing well is Nick Covington. And that was good defense there. It's already over his average. Carruthers tried for the acrobatic put back, wouldn't go. Chance to get it uh, above 10 points now, and out of bounds. And off the hip of one of the IPFW Tires. players. We've got a media timeout, 25-15. Weaver State with the lead. You're watching IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Uh, Memorial Coliseum, everybody. Randy Shippen, Pat Hoffman with you tonight. Weaver State leading the Dons right now, 25-15, 11-19 to go in the first half. And Pat, the Wildcats shooting 79% from the field. I, that's absolutely incredible. The Dons at 40%. That's better than they've shot the ball this year. A key going in was to uh, out-rebound the Wildcats right now at 6-6, but the Wildcats haven't had many chances for rebounds because they're making every shot. And they've done it equally effectively against the zone or the man-to-man -man defense. I'm sticking in that 2-3. High off the window, won't go. DeWitt Scott comes down with the rebound. IPFW will push it. Pompey into the game once again. Didn't get the start tonight. He's been starting throughout the year. And pass going to be tipped and stolen away. And in for the shot, but the foul by Pompey. Chauncey Shelton will go to the line and shoot two. Well, after making a soft pass there, you knew Pompey wasn't going to let that man make an easy layup. But they, again, Pat, that's an unforced turnover right there. You have to be more decisive with the ball. Dane Fife getting his point across to his young freshman point guard. And that you know, freshman point guard in college is I understand, extremely difficult. But that's a pass you wouldn't make in high school. That would be a turnover in high school as well. You have to make crisp passes. That wasn't a crisp pa pass. He just tossed it up. It was like a jump ball. Shelton misses the front end of the two free throws. Kyle Savely getting ready to come back in. Shelton does get one out of two. So Savely will check back in, but not for Pompey. Quentin Brothers will get the break. Again, an undersized Don's team out on the floor right now. When you're only playing six guys, you know, guys have to play a couple of positions out there, sometimes three positions. Hawkins with it at the top, over to Pompey. So Sable's playing the off guard right now. Scott free on top, won't go. Rebound, Weaver State. Quickly push it back, Covington, and he'll get it to go. He's got 11 points, Randy. He's only been in double figures twice this year. He averages seven points. His main job is to distribute, but right now he's five of five from the field, including a three-pointer. Yeah, the other four were layups. He is making it happen for the Wildcats. Lead back up to 13. Dons had cut it down to, I believe, five at one point. Yep. We've got it right back. Best inside, won't go. Rebound pulled down by David Patton. Here's Covington. And the Dons continue, you know, this season. They fall behind, they make good runs, but Pat, you know what invariably happens. You make those good runs and you burn so much energy trying to come back. Eventually, you just run out of gas. I think they got number 40 there. Is that who they got? Clint Burris for a clear out? Won't be a shooting foul, though. 
Dons will send in DJ Posley. Another freshman. Out of Illinois. Uh, a lot of the uh, scouting services had DJ Posey ranked one of the top five guards in the state of Illinois last year, and that's saying a lot because that's, you know, as you know, coming from Michigan, some great basketball up there. Well, I grew up in Illinois, some great basketball there as well. No doubt about that. Just ask Bruce Weber. He's getting a lot of those kids. <laughs> yeah. Don's looking for a spark here. Save with the drive. No foul. Back to the deck. Won't go, but DeWitt Scott can't get it. A lot of contact. No call. Out of bounds to, I believe, IPFW. Yeah, I really thought they had a call foul one way or the other on the Savely play. I thought Kyle Savely got fouled. In there. You know, Indiana takes some of those good Illinois and Michigan players, too. I remember a kid, Isaiah Thomas, from the Illinois player. Yeah, he wasn't too bad. Yeah, and then he played his pro career in Michigan, didn't he? That, that's right. So we're going to end the story there, or are you going to get into your no, that's other it. Isaiah Thomas stories? No, no, we'll, we'll, just, tonight. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Hawkins with it's it. Christmas time will be nice. <laughs> Don's Great inside, pass. and now there's you like to see. They yeah. worked it around, worked it around. No one with the quick three, no one with the quick two. Got the good shot, and Best makes it count. Well, they actually ran the offense that time, and it was a freshman, DJ Posley, off the bench with a terrific pass inside to Tyler Best. No look inside, turn around, won't go. And the Don's get the rebound. It's Third Mr. rebound Savely. to Savely. I think he's their leading rebounder right now. In fact, he is their leading rebounder. Right now. And then he throws it away. Tried to cut in, but he then... Diving on the floor, ball's loose. <laughs> Better hurry and get it across the timeline. Took a 30 second timeout. That's good coaching right there. He knew they weren't gonna get it across and called the timeout. One second left to get that ball across the 10 second line. Yeah. Good coach. I tell you what, the one thing looking at the Sure, we'll go ahead and take a look at another shot. Sadly, that. three rebounds. Uh, DeWitt Scott has three as well. I really thought that, uh, you know, Savely, well, got fouled, and then Scott might have got hit on the arm when he's trying to lay it up as well. It's always strange. The officials sometimes seem like they call, if, you, if you're looking at a guy the wrong way, they'll call a foul. Next time, two guys collide, they don't know who to call, and they don't call anything. Johns need to pick up the shooting 35% right now and 70% uh, for the Wildcats. Uh, if my math is correct, that's double. Turnovers, Don's have five, only one for the Wildcats. That's huge. Don's actually out rebounding Weber State 10 to eight. But then again, as we said, Weber State not having as many chances to uh, rebound right. because they're making all their shots. 12 out of 17. We near the eight minute mark in the first half and the Don's with the quick hands of Savely get the turnover. Here comes Posley, he'll take it all the way off the window and count it. Now that didn't look like a freshman, Pat. Did it a couple of freshmen. Savely with the good hands knocking the ball away and Posley knew he had the one I want. If he doesn't make that shot, they're gonna call a foul. Now he might get the old fashioned three point play. Gets the lead back under 10. Jake Posley, 6'3", freshman, as we said, out of Illinois, highly touted. You know what? A play like that can give a guy a lot of confidence for the rest of the game and for the rest of the season, and I think it's nice to see Coach Fife going a little deeper on the bench tonight. Uh, we might see maybe, uh, you know, Jakari in here as well. Jakari Johnson, who was uh, All-Stater in Michigan last year. Posley completes the three-point play, cuts the lead down to eight. Bonds would like to have a nice little run here in the final eight minutes so they don't have so much to make up in the second half. Covington cuts in the lane, gets it to Riggs, and he'll get the easy two. Best really couldn't afford another foul in there. Another layup. You know, if we had, you know, all the expensive toys like ESPN with the little graphic with, the, with where the shots are coming from, I guarantee you 10 out of their 13 baskets are layups. I'd agree with you. Except for the one dunk. Yeah, because they have three three-pointers. Everything else has been a layup or a dunk. Lead is back to 10. Quentin Carruthers is back in the game for IPFW. Posley trying to direct traffic. Hey, Posley, he's 6'3". What do you think he weighs, about 150? <laughs> Clock down to two. Inside, Best won't go. Gets his own rebound, won't go. Carruthers fights for it and puts it in. Great effort underneath by the Dons. Cuts the lead back down to eight. And Pat, I'm not trying to sound like a homer here, but Best got fouled on both of those shots. I mean, he really did. I mean, we're, we're sitting just a few feet away, and you could see him get hit. He's got a cloud in this town. Let's talk to the refs. 
<laughs> Don's with a nice little run here. Got it down to eight. Like to see another defensive stop. Three from the left side. Curls out. Saved with a rebound. Looks to push. Hawkins steps back, fires the three, and knocks it down. Now that's a good three-pointer. On the break, he's wide open. That was a nice three-pointer. Some great defense by the Dons. And the media timeout's going to come on the next dead ball, and I think they can actually use a little, a little breather right now. And Riggs with the answer at the other end. Lead back up to seven. Dons again push it down. Carruthers on the wing. We're near the six-minute mark. Riggs has a beautiful stroke, doesn't he? He sure does. But they've kept him pretty much in check. Carruthers back to Posley. Shot clock at 15. Taking a little time off it now. This also gives the team a chance to rest. When you're not playing a lot of guys, you got to have a breather. Hawkins going to hit another three. That one won't go. Savely tried to keep it alive, but instead it's going to be called. I don't know who they're calling the foul line. Well, they, 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 they said number two. It's either two for us or two for them because those are the two. No, it's on number 10. Weaver State. We have a break in the action. It's a seven point game, 546 to go. We'll be right back. You're watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Oh, yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Okay, Pat, watch Kyle Sabre. He's like a gnat out there. He's going up against two guys much bigger than he is, but just by going straight up and having the man jump into him, he draws a foul. Now he's going to get an opportunity to score two points at the line. Well, he's you... like one of those little gnats. He's buzzing around, buzzing around, <laughs> getting some steals. He's got four rebounds. He's got a couple of assists. It's a nice little ball game already. Don's have trailed by as many as 13. Right now it is at seven. I think five's the closest they've been since that point. They've been there twice, most right. recently at... 30 to 25, they can get it back there again. I'll tell you what, if they can go into the locker room, boy, that's one you don't want to give away. And they're in the double bonus now, so the 10 fouls on Weber State, the Downs will get two free throws every time. If you could keep it around five or six going into the locker room, you're in good shape. Then you don't have that much ground to make up in the second half. Savely gets one out of two. He says he's got four rebounds. That's his first point of the game. He Got the start today, has not, has been coming off the bench, but got the start, actually got up to a little bit of a rough start, and they brought Pompey in, but he's more than made up for it. Yeah, he picked up that early foul, and sometimes that'll make you a little tentative because you know if you get two, you're sitting down. Don's again playing that zone, in again to Covington. No, it's his first miss of the game, knocked out of bounds. Ooh, I don't know about that one. The refs say it's off of IPFW. Joko Edgerich in the ball game for the first time tonight. Big number 5-0. Z-Man. I'll tell you what, he's just so strong. Uh, Covington that he's just muscling any IPFW player who guards him inside. I mean, he's just too physical. He's built sort of like a, a guy who you, I know you, you like to watch play, Chauncey Billups. Very stocky. Let's Mr. Say. Big Shot, as they like to call. <laughs> He does make some big shots. 32-26, <laughs> big possession here. The Covington, 6'1", 205 pounds. That's a free safety. Yeah. <laughs> Don's with the chance to cut it to four or three. Like to see him get a high percentage shot here. It'll be Hawkins for the three, and he was fouled on that play. But Beautiful. he knocked it down. Beautiful drive and dish there by DJ Posley, who's sort of been like the Kyle Savely of the Don tonight. He's coming off the bench, Pat, and really done a great job. 
Inside, they'll kick it out now. Long three. I thought it was going to miss everything. Guns now with a chance to tie it if they can get a three here. Give with one if they can get a two. And who got the rebound there? Hawkins for three more. Won't go. Rebound is going to be off of Riggs' hands. Wow. Kyle Saban with five rebounds now. He's got an assist. How about DJ Posley with a couple of quick assists off the bench? He's doing a really, really nice job out there. He's earning more playing time tonight. Justin Hawkins really stepping up with nine yep. points, couple of threes. When Hawk makes an early shot, Pat, you can just see the confidence grows in him. He's one of those guys who needs to shoot well early to keep shooting, where a guy like a DeWitt Scott, who usually scores a lot, will keep shooting him. You know, Dane Fife was talking about that the other day. He said Quentin Carruthers does that all the time. He picks up his foot before he starts to dribble, and a lot of refs are calling that. Selko Edgerich going to match up with Patton inside. Going to give him a couple of minutes off the bench. Patton going to be fouled by Zelko. Well, he just walked by him like he wasn't guarding. I mean, it looked, just looked like he was practicing by himself out there. You got to move your feet on defense. You can't play defense with your hands. You got to play with your feet. 32 29. The Dons. You see on the replay, I mean, Zelko didn't even have the body on him. He just went right by him. At least he didn't get a cheap ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get him across the chops. Yeah. And he missed the free throw. Zelko doesn't get many minutes. He's going he's to get a foul. He's going to make it a good one. Well, again, Pat, you got to earn the minutes. You just don't get him. That's a good point, coach. <laughs> Lead is back to four. Posley's been a nice little spark plug. He's got it on top over to Carruthers. Quick move to the basket and a charge drawn by Patton. Boy, well, there's, there's one I'd like to see again. I thought Patton stepped in late. I've, now, Carruthers definitely stepped into him, but I thought that uh, Patton stepped in a little late on that one. Don't know if we can see it or not, but there you go. You see Patton was sliding over. See, he wasn't established. That's, that's a borderline call. Now you. Yeah, that's a whole other argument about uh, <laughs> offensive fouls and blocking, too. So. Riggs with that uh, move to the basket won't go. DeWitt Scott back into the game, comes down with a rebound. Safely will push it down the left side. Now it's Scott on top. Again, these last several possessions of the first half, very key. The lead is four. If the Dons can keep it right here, I think they'd be thrilled to go out of the locker room. But you can't let Weaver stay have that little push the last few minutes to, to bump it back up. Need a good possession here. Shot Plenty clock at seven. Posley going to try to create at the free throw line, knocks it down. I'll tell you what, he's having the best game he's played so far, Pat. He looks like a seasoned vet out there, doesn't he? He knew right what to do. He knew you know, there were just three, four seconds on the shot clock. He backed his man down, faded away to create space for the jump shot. Dons have chopped 11 points off the lead, and they get a rebound. They'll have a chance to tie or take the lead here. Crowd's getting into it a little now, too. Well, that we, always helps. Weber State after that quick start. Three for the lead. Won't go by Scott. Edgerich lucky they didn't call over the back. Oh, Riggs knows how to finish. He gets the bucket and the foul. Dane Fife very animated off the bench. And you see he gets so excited because you're starting to catch up and then you forget to get back on defense. I believe we have a break in action. The lead is back up to four points. We'll take a timeout. 35-31 Weber State. They'll shoot a free throw when we come back. You're watching IPFW Basketball at UPN Fort Wayne. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56.
Okay, we thought we were gonna get a look at that last shot, but we're not gonna, but it did go in. The bucket is good. Referee's coming over to the table for a little help from us tonight. We're always glad to offer it, aren't we, Pat? Well, that one, it's a point for the other team, but. <laughs> you gotta be fair, though. Says who? Basket went in. Sometimes, the you know, the official gets knocked out of the way and can't see the ball. Home court advantage, man. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, what time of the year is it? It's Christmas time. Okay. Goodwill towards all men. <laughs> We are broadcasting on UPN Fort Wayne. <laughs> Free throw is good, 36-31, 2.35 to play first half. It's, again, not to, to reiterate it too many times, but a very key stretch in this basketball game. And Covington gonna be called for the check. Boy, boy that wasn't a smart foul right there. Uh, you know, DJ, uh, DJ Posey was just dribbling around looking for somebody to dish to, and as he cut through a couple of guys, gets slapped, now he gets a couple of free throws. Posley really been a nice bright spot. He's got five points, hit both of his field goals. This is his first free throw attempt. Yeah, he's played extremely well off the bench. <laughs> we bragged about the IPFW shooting free throws well, and now just three out of six. Kyle Savely taking a seat now. DJ Posley, or excuse me, uh, Brad Pompey coming in. Too many P's. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up. I think my mind's on vacation too. <laughs> <laughs> you are on your way to Florida tomorrow, are you not? Yes, I are. Somebody's got to go there. We got to keep the economy moving. <laughs> Don't you listen to the president? Posley <laughs> with a free throw. It's a four point game. Key two and a half minutes to go in this first half. Though. Don't want to let a spurt go by the Wildcats and fall behind by, say, eight or ten points. A great job whittling a 13 point lead down to four. Case just joined us. It was another rough start for IPFW, but they have battled back. I'd like to see him finish the half strong. I'll tell you what, Magic Johnson wasn't going to squeeze that pass in that Nick Covington <laughs> just tried to do. I mean, there was just that was like you know a, a thread through a needle. You just couldn't do that. Don's looking for that high percentage shot. Best with it right now. Thinks about the three. It looked like it was on. A little off the mark. Zelko Edrick with a rebound. He's tied up. Don's get it back inside. Two best. Little wrap around. Zelko with a left hand won't go. Oh, Z might be getting in the book. I'll tell you what, too. That was a great inside pass by Best. It looks easy, but sometimes when you're really close to somebody, that's a tougher pass. He just made a great move there. Don's very aggressive on the offensive boards tonight. 18 to 10, they're leading the rebound battle. And uh, the Wildcats, as we expected would happen, Pat, have cooled off just a bit. They're down to 60% from the floor, Don shooting 40%. Don's will have to take advantage of those free throws. Only four out of seven from the line right now. Z-Man misses the first free throw. He's three out of four coming in. Just two field goals on the year, but Trying to earn some more minutes and gets a clutch free throw there. Lead is back to three. Minute 39 to play in the first half. Towns have really held their composure very well here in the first half after falling behind by 13. And really, their offense wasn't that bad early. Their defense was horrible. The zone, I think, is, is starting yeah. to pay dividends. It didn't immediately, but after about three or four possessions, I think it did. Pompey thought about the three. That would have tied it. Smart move, though. He wasn't open, and he didn't force it. And that was uh, Edgerich with the block down there. So Z's done a little of everything tonight. He's got a point. He's got a rebound. He's gotten a block. He needs an assist now. Pompey on top. 15 on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Best really wants the ball. He was calling for it. Kick it out. Three won't go. And rebound by Patton. I guarantee you, Pat, the refs, uh, excuse me, the uh, coaches are going to tell the Dons, don't shoot so many threes. 15 three-point shot, shot attempts in the first half already out of 31 shots. That's basically half, and that's way too many. Way too many. Even if you're open, that's too many. Wide open three, but a long one for Covington. That's perhaps a little out of his range. Shot clock is off. The Dons can hold for the final shot if they so choose. Dane Fife with a big <laughs> one in the air, and I'm yeah. hoping they saw that, because otherwise it's going to be yeah. pretty upset. So a chance to go in down by no more than three. Good 20 eyes seconds there. to go. Good eyes there, partner, because they <laughs> threw the ball up because uh, Scott was streaking on the side, but he was oh. off. Covington going for the steal, but Don's get it back. Still got 10 seconds to go. Pompey near the timeline. Six on the clock, drives in, and a charge. 
You know what? At that point, when they picked it up in the backcourt, it might have been smart to call a 30 second timeout there and regroup. Yeah, frustrating type situation. Easy there. for me to say sitting here, too. You might get a look at that one again. You see the ball. Okay. Well, when they got it back in the backcourt, they might have just wanted to regroup, and Patton was planted in the lane that time. That's a good call, by the way. So now a chance for momentum. Hoop, four seconds to go. Covington brings it down. He'll take the long shot. Almost went from near half court to the Dons. Closer. Dodge a bullet. We have played 20 minutes, and it wasn't always pretty, but you know what? It's all said and done. Three-point game at the half. I think Dane Fife will take that. 36-33, Weber State on top. Randy will have a special guest, Chris Paul of the IPFW women's basketball team joining us when we come back. You are watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. IPFW has its very own pep band. The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. We just talked a couple of weeks ago, and it's not that I mind talking to you again, but I know you'd like this to be for different reasons. You just named the interim head coach for the women yesterday, and uh, just not a good situation, I mean, because you hate to see your father-in-law, right. the head coach, Bruce Patterson, step down. Right. Whenever, whenever you have an interim uh, situation come about, an assistant has to become a head coach, a lot of emotions are going through your body. But when it's your father-in-law, too, I can't even describe to you what I was feeling yesterday. I was really, really worried about the, about the press conference because I knew that Bruce and I were going to get kind of emotional. So luckily, we talked to, uh, talked to Mark. Mark kept things very quick and very short for us, so we didn't break down. But I will tell you that Bruce decided that this was something that he thought he needed to do. Um, he's at peace with it, and, and I'm happy for him. I really am. I know you say you weren't emotional during the press conference, but right afterwards, boy, you 
and Coach Patterson and Ashley Johnson was there. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen any, you know, people just get so choked up. Well, it's a situation where these players love Bruce. And obviously, not only do they love Bruce, but I wouldn't be where I am without him. You know, everybody has somebody in their life who takes care of them, and he's mine. So when he decides that he feels like he can't do it anymore and I have to step in, not only is that something that I, I wasn't prepared for, but it also is overwhelming to me that he has that much confidence in me to allow me to take over a program that he built. What do you do now to keep the team together and keep the team focused? Because you have a game tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Yeah, we don't, have, we don't have a lot of time. What we did today is we talked about we're going to build on all the foundations that Bruce has put in place. We're going to continue to do that. We're not going to make a lot of changes, but they have to be prepared that Bruce and I are different people, you know, and, and substitutions may be different. My intensity is going to be a little different than Bruce's because uh, we're two different people, and we'll just build on, on what we have currently in place. I don't know if this makes sense, but it's different. When a coach gets fired, I think a lot of times the players look at themselves and blame themselves. But this is a coach stepping down. But is there still some of that where maybe the players look at themselves and think, well, maybe if we played better, he wouldn't have resigned? Well, uh, there hasn't been one player that has said that to me. But since we are currently 1-7, and seven, I got to feel like there's players who are thinking that they're taking some accountability for it. And they're understanding now that we can have a great team GPA, we can have great students, but, and those things are great, and we will continue to do that. But bottom line is, you and I know we have to win as well. And hopefully this sends a message to them that this is, this is business. I remember when this happened last year, Joe Pachota said to me, they don't call it show friends, they call it show business. And that's really what it is. Now, are you going to change things up at all? Or maybe for right now, are you going to keep things status quo? Um, we're going to change things a little bit, but not a lot. Because we've only had one day of practice. And I don't believe that what we're doing necessarily is wrong. We just need some type of spark, possibly. So what they'll find from me tomorrow is I don't sit very often. I will be up and down. Uh, there'll be a lot of intensity. I will. Um, you know, I'll sweat and I'll get red faced and I'll walk up and down and I'll just ask that they match that intensity. And I know for you this has to be such mixed emotions because it's very exciting to be the head coach, but it's also very sad for you at the same time. It was, it, it is. And, and a lot of my friends were scared to call me because they don't want to call and congratulate when somebody resigns. Um, it is a great opportunity for me and I am very appreciative of it. But I also have to keep things in perspective here and understand why it happened and just work day by day and we'll get to March and then we see what happens. Okay, well good luck tomorrow afternoon. For those of you at home, if you're on break right now, you got some time off work. One o'clock tomorrow at the Gate Center, the women will play Chris. Thank good you. luck and I'm sure we'll Thank talk you. to you again. Pat? All right, thanks a lot, Randy. We are at halftime, 36-33 our score. We'll recap the first half of this game when we come back. You're watching IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Pizza. Pizza. Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum, agaricus bisporus, huh? allium sepa. Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Oh, yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sidelines, and it's up. If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon.
know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members, and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Welcome back once again to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Happy holidays, everyone. A couple of days away from Christmas, and right now, IPFW would make it a Merry Christmas if they can overcome a three-point deficit at halftime. They've already overcome a 13-point right. deficit. They closed Twice. the first half yeah, <laughs> on an 18-8 run after trailing 28-15. Yeah, the Downs have done a great job, and uh, it's been Kyle Savely off the bench providing the spark most of the season tonight. DJ Posley off the bench. Six points. Very, very well played. A couple of assists, and he's really run the offense well out there. He looks like a true point guard that he's very comfortable handling the ball. Pat Hoffman along with Randy Schiffman. Happy you're along with us on UPN Fort Wayne. And by the way, if you're tuning in expecting to see one of my favorite new shows of the year, Everybody Hates Chris, it's coming on right after the game. So We cool. love that. Yeah, I really do like that show. I haven't it's a very seen good it show. Uh, speaking of this ball game, though, let's go ahead and take a look at the first half stats. A uh, couple of stats will kind of stick out number one the field goal percentage but fortunately uh, when we do take a look at it um, Weber State started out on fire and they did cool off quite a bit but still outstanding 56 percent in the first half yeah these guys were shooting almost 80 percent for quite a bit of the first half but the biggest one right now the Dons leading the rebound battle by 10 but that's huge yeah the, the, that's huge but the one we kind of touched on look at the bottom the pip that's points, points in the, in the paint. paint, 22 to 8 in favor of Weber State. Most of that in the first 10 minutes of the game. Once they switched to that zone, it, it yeah. took a few possessions, but that really kind of uh, turned the tide a little bit. Nine out of the first 10 baskets for the Wildcats were layups. Well, no, excuse me. Eight were layups. One was a dunk, and the other one was a three-pointer. It's just unbelievable how well they shot early. But when the Dons went to the zone, which is something Dane Fife really doesn't like to do, he's a man-to-man -man, man, but they had to do it because it worked against Purdue, and it's working very well tonight. Sometimes, you know what? It's working. You do it. That's right. Individual leading scorers, a pair of uh, Wildcats with 11 apiece. Corrick Ricks and Nick Covington, each with 11. Dons led in the first half by nine points by Justin Hawkins. We'll take a time out. We'll have the start of the second half when we come back. You're watching IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at $2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. 
On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Once again, Dane Fife, uh, he has been very effective uh, in the halftime locker room several times this year. We'll see uh, if this time it will be as successful as well because he's not in as big a hole yeah. as he's been in several other times. And, and mark my words right now, Pat Hoffman. <laughs> okay. Happy Downs, holidays to the cheerleaders, yes. by the way. Like that. It looks very festive. The Downs, four out of 15 in the first half from three point line. Yeah, obviously, that's not a great percentage, but the 15 is the number that bothers me. I don't think they'll shoot 15 three-pointers in the second half. Now watch, they'll wind up shooting 20, but that won't be 15. And I was laughing when we came back because I keep looking down at my briefcase here, and Tom Spees gave me a pair of shoes that he wants me to show on, on the news one night. Greg Oden shoes. Okay? <laughs> They're big. These are the small ones because this, this uh, one just happens to be sized differently. This, you know, not every shoe fits exactly the same. These are only 18 and a half. He usually wears a 20. <laughs> nine of the <laughs> not bad nine of the original <laughs> 10 starters on the floor the one change is the man with the ball right now that is DJ Posley over to Quentin Carruthers now and that might be a good move bringing Kyle Savely off the bench again you know Pat some guys are just more comfortable coming off the bench and since that's what he's been doing all year it might be better now if you start all year you like to start but Savely right now might be more comfortable off the bench. And Posley earned those minutes and he knocks down the three. Folks, we have a tie basketball game. And Pat, a big thing about this, we talked about it in the first half. When you get down, you get down and you, and you fight back and you make that run, you run out of gas sometimes. But now, basically, you're at halftime and it's a tie ball game. So the Dons haven't expended all that energy in the second half coming back. Coming out party for the freshman and look at Carruthers with the steal take it all the way and draw the foul he'll shoot a couple of free throws down to the chance to take the lead their first lead of this game they have not led Quentin Carruthers had to uh, sit for a little at the end of the first half I think the coach Fife was making sure he didn't pick up an extra foul and I'll tell you what he came out and he's ready to go this half made a great play as uh, the Wildcats are trying to skip pass you know when you throw it over the defense you skip the player and Carruthers was ready right in that lane. I'll tell you what, this zone is working beautifully for them. Because we really haven't seen them play it much here. They played it on the road the other night, and Dane Fife told me that he was experimenting with it in practice and was going to use it against Notre Dame. But their defense was very good against Notre Dame, so they didn't really need to switch. Carruthers with nine, excuse me, Posey with nine points. Posley had a uh, previous high of just four against Valpo. So clearly he is finding some confidence. Carruthers gets two free throws. Dons lead it by two. And they're taking advantage of the free throws, Pat. Seven out of ten from the line for the Dons, 70 percent. That's pretty good. And only three out of five for the Wildcats. They're not really getting to the line because they had all those uncontested layups. Riggs cut off nicely that time by DeWitt Scott. Covington had the hot hand or at least cooled off a little bit. Now it's Patton. Little baseline shot won't go. Rebound. Mr. Posley. You know that wasn't that tough of a oh. shot Pat but he looked very unsure when he uh, put the ball down there Patton but he made it up on defense. Covington will get the bucket. Boy again unforced turnover. Unforced turnover. Posley's been playing so well got a little excited that time tried to push it up. Good hands though by Patton. It was yeah. pretty close range. The ball had some good speed on it. Well, he was a really good receiver for the New England Patriots all those years. <laughs> He's gotten a lot taller. Carruthers creates his own shot, won't go, and I'm reading Coach Fife's face. He was not happy. Not what that does it shot. say? It said he didn't like that shot. It wasn't that bad of a shot. Carruthers is very good at that backing down and creating space for the shot. He's done that all season long. He's been much better about shooting the twos this year than settling for the three. He doesn't take a lot of three pointers anymore. Well, maybe Dane had some indigestion because he had a sour look on his face <laughs> at that shot. Good defensive. Very good defensive uh, possession there for the Dons, but I think they're going to call a foul on the rebound, on the air ball. Yeah, that's a tough break. Dons had good D. Riggs missed everything, but Justin Hawkins, who's been all over this floor tonight, Called for the foul. Boy, that's a tough one to call. 
Tell you what, we're going to have to get Coach Cravens to sit down. A more. <laughs> well, good, he moved to the other end. I mean, he was right in front of us. I know, he's, he, he's trying to box us out. Not that he's a bad looking man or anything, but. Alley oop, back door, and there's the jam by Riggs. We've been waiting for that all night. And that's the trouble once in a while with the zone, Pat. You know, when you're playing a zone, some guys have a tendency just to guard their area, but you still have to guard the man who is in your area. So, Weaver State back out two. The one good thing when you get a big jam on the road, you don't get quite as much <laughs> momentum as at home. Best get a fight inside, can't get it to go, but does get a chance for two free throws. He and Coach Cravens didn't exactly like that. He didn't disagree with the call, but uh, quite animated. Nadim Pajovic found himself in early foul trouble in this basketball game. Didn't see too much of him in that first half. Now he picks up another foul. And he's going right back out. And number 40, Clint Burr is coming back in. The man who Pat said looked like he was yeah. the same age as his number 40. <laughs> yeah, I think now he said he looked 42. Why did you say that about him? Folks tuning in, perhaps a tape of this heading out to Utah to the Burris family. It was Mr. Schiffman with those comments earlier. My father here. <laughs> chance, My dad. Chance to tie it back up for Tyler Best. Following up on the uh, strong game against Purdue. He's got eight points. Now you can mark it down for his ninth. And the Dons, nine out of 12 from the free throw line, 75%. That's the number the coaches want, at least 75% from the line. They're shooting almost 40% from the field, and Dane Fife wants at least 42. So they're doing pretty well right now, numerically. Riggs went into the heart of that zone. DeWitt Scott called for a little grab on the arm. And that's a tough call there, too, because because he dropped the ball, Riggs. You know, it's one thing if a guy's slapping at your arms, knocking away, but he dropped the ball. Carruthers almost with the steal off the inbounds. He's really hustling on defense. And yeah, now Carruthers does get the steal. Three on three. He'll get it over to Posley. Could have hit another. That one too strong. A little too much adrenaline maybe right now for DJ Posley. Pat, that's a walk. He's going, I stop. <laughs> yeah, you did, but your foot kept moving. <laughs> your pivot foot. <laughs> and Coach Craven's telling him that, yeah, you got to get rid of that ball. That was a walk. <laughs> Tied up at 40. I mean, Covington's got a lot of momentum. You know, he's stuck again. He's built like he's a free safety. A little over six foot tall, over 200 pounds. Best with it, guarded by Burrish, tripped up, and we'll have a foul call, I believe, against Corrick Ricks. Yep. Um, the Dons, Pat, have been running a lot of their offense through Tyler Best this year. And, you know, Dane Fife said that last night to me on the Dane Fife show, which you can watch at 7.30 Wednesday nights here on UPN Fort Wayne, plug, plug. They said that may, they may be asked, uh, actually asking too much of Best right now. Carruthers had an opening for a minute. He was going yeah. for the poster. I'll tell you what, Patton's got some ups, and he went up there and blocked that one. But the best, you know, he has to run the offense. He's got to guard the biggest guy on defense. They need him to rebound. It's a lot of weight on his shoulders. Carruthers' shot won't go. Chance for Weber State to retake the lead. Riggs has really started to heat up after a little bit of a slow start. He's up to 13 points. He's tied with Covington leading the way for Weber State. Better balance on IPFW. Riggs shot won't go. And Mr. Clean inside with a rebound cleans the glass but can't get it to go. Yeah, that was an air ball from about a foot and a half. And then the Dons throw it away. We've got a media timeout tied at 40. Good ball game. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. You're watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, 
stomp. Weaver State trying to break a 40-all tie. Town's very active in the zone, Pat. You notice that they're not just sitting back, they're being aggressive, attacking the guy who gets the ball. Yeah, knocking down the shot, Terrell Stovall. Puts Weaver State back up by a deuce. Well, that was a clean shot right there, his first points of the night. What do you think Dane Fife wanted to get across during that break? Be careful with the ball. The turnovers they've had in this half have been unforced turnovers. Inside, Best, Burris hit the ground, refs no call. And he called it on the, going up on the second on the reload. That did look like a bit of a flop there by Burris. There wasn't much contact there, but you know, tonight it seems like guys ran into each other and they call nothing. And then a couple of plays on both, going both ways, where guys uh, barely touching each other and there's a foul. There you go, he, he flopped. He was falling down before uh, Best got to the spot. Save wheel check back into the game. And also Pompey. DJ Posley's really, really done a great job tonight. He's got uh, nine points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists, really putting in some quality minutes. He's three out of four from the field, two out of three from the line. So very efficient in his score. Best looking for his 11th point. And that free throw won't go. You know, that last one, it looked like it was a three-pointer by uh, Stovall. They called it a two. They changed it up there. I thought he shot a three-pointer. I was shielded by the coach again. <laughs> As was I. But I thought I saw the ref's arm up. Riggs fakes the three, shoots the 17-footer, leaves it short, saved it with another rebound. Well, that looked like uh, one that you and I hit on the golf course, Pat, when we don't catch it right. Oh. The others with the cut lost it on his way up, but you could see that explosive step to the basket. That was going to be a bring down the house thunder dunk tomahawk, and the ball just slipped out of his hands. It's a little cool in here tonight. That might have been the problem. Uh, we'll stick him on the ball. I find it quite pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Well, you are underneath, but just, <laughs> you're wearing more than just that. We'll just stop that conversation right now. Pompey bringing it down. Don's a chance to take the lead. Carruthers, Pompey on top. Again, though, the good defense of Don's cutting off the passing lanes and forcing another turnover. Very, very active in the zone. Sort of like, you know, Jim Beheim at Syracuse. They always play the zone, but it's very active. Carruthers, the little pull up. Puts IPFW back up by one. What's what, second lead of the night? Crowd getting into it again. Not as big as crowd as there was here on Sunday, but being very vocal. Yeah, the ones behind us actually really getting on the rest. I like to hear that. <laughs> three will go that time. No doubt about the three that time for Stovall. Yeah, he was way behind the line. The Weaver State answers. They're back up by a deuce. You know, Stovall did a little like Reggie Miller pose with the uh, follow through after the shot. Savely holding that pivot foot over to Carruthers. Down the line, tried to pass it to Hawkins, and it's stolen away by Cox. And being sloppy with the ball. And Fife chomping on that gun. Savely just, just flat out grabbed Brett Cox there. Zelko Edrick going to check back into the game along with DeWitt Scott. You know, surprisingly, Pat, the Don's 43 points already, uh, you know, with a little over 13 minutes to go, and their leading scorer, DeWitt Scott, very quiet. He only has five points. Taking seven shots, only made a couple. Yeah, he's the kind of player that, uh, as well as he started off this season, people are starting to know about DeWitt Scott, where they did not before, and it's now starting to perhaps game plan yeah. against him. Well, the other night at Purdue, we mentioned it in the first half. He didn't score in the first half there, but then he had 10 in the second half. Look at that great play by Brad Pompey. Oh, he stepped on the line. Looked like the Dons had forced another turnover. 
I think Coach Cravens was about was right by the ref on that one. He thought there should have been a foul. It was right in front yeah. of the bench. And they do not reset the shot clock because IPFW didn't have possession of the ball. So it wasn't uh, only 18 on the shot clock. Though that's plenty of time to get off the shot. Good defense, though. Boy, what? Uh, I'm trying to remember. The Wildcats had 13 points in about two, two and a half minutes tonight. Since then, only 30 points. So Don's been playing really, really well on defense after the first few minutes. There's a travel. <laughs> Isn't it nice the last two or three years how referees are calling the travel again and they're also calling palming the ball? Yes. They're actually enforcing the rules. <laughs> Not in the NBA, though. No, they're, they're calling it more there, too. Well, a lot of it's just because Patrick Ewing doesn't play anymore. There's half the walks in the NBA right there. <laughs> Don's down by two. Chance to tie or take the lead with a three. I'd like to see an inside shot. If they can get it, the best is on the bench. And save will take the three. Won't go. Kicked back out. It's Covington in a foot race with DeWitt he walked. Scott. And he walked with the basketball again. What happened on that one is he lost control of the dribble. It came up and it hit him in the chest and he took an extra step. And he was also going one on four. You know, on, on the offensive glass there, Edgerich made a nice move. Tip, he couldn't grab that rebound, but he tipped it back to try to keep it alive. And it's good to tip it back at the basket where you're shooting because, you know, even if it's a turnover, the other team has to go 80 feet, 90 feet to uh, try to score. So that was a real good play by Z there to keep it alive. Don's again with a chance to tie or take the lead. Savely with a giving up about eight inches to Patton. <laughs> He's got to have a huge quickness advantage here. Yeah, that's a strange match. For him. Six eight against six foot, uh, generously six foot. Now along the baseline, stolen by Covington, but keeps it in to DeWitt Scott. He likes that shot, won't go over Edridge's head. Patton with it. But Scott was shocked. He was so open for that short shot. They're inside 12 minutes. Stovall's had the hot hand, hits another three. He's hit his last three shots, and all of a sudden, they've opened up a five-point lead. Stovall hasn't touched anything but the bottom of the net on those shots. With Scott's going to be fouled. He'll have a couple of free throws. First of all, we're going to take a break. 48 43 is our score. You are watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Back once again at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, a couple of days before Christmas. Don's looking for an early Christmas present for their young head coach, the youngest head coach in Division I, Dane Fife. Nice little article about him in Sporting News this week. Did you see that? I have to check it out. Tyler. DeWitt Scott with a free throw. Tyler Best coming back in for Jelko Edgerich. Well, did, did you get your shopping done, by the way? I, I did get my shopping done last night. <laughs> I wanted to go to the comics game, but I was like, well, my family wants gifts, so I better get some gifts. That's early for you, isn't it? Actually, that is early for me. Not as bad as, you remember Doc Westfield, DJ? Oh, yeah. 
Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock, every year is when he does his shopping. He I says it's great, there's nobody there. That's usually when I'm finishing up. Covington going to be called. Wait, one. Now the ref underneath has it called a charge, and the guy up top called it a block. The ref underneath should be able to make the call because he's the one closer to it. Well, it, it looks like he's going to. We're discussing, we're discussing. Oh, he's, they could call it both ways here because they're calling the coaches in now. There you see it on the replay. It looked like the Witt Scott was set. At center court, the ref and both coaches are huddled up. I'm trying to ease in there and see if I can hear it. <laughs> okay, you go ahead. Pat's listening in, and Don's huddling at center court. The ref's talking. Uh, maybe we, here's, here's a look at it again. Scott was... Scott was pretty set. You don't have to be totally set. If somebody lowers their shoulder and puts it into you and initiates the contact, that's supposed to be an offensive foul. They don't always call it that way, but that's what it's supposed to be. What, what'd you glean there, Pat? The only thing I could, I mean, you know what, you should have probably done it because I'm hard of hearing, but the <laughs> one thing say? I did hear was <laughs> there's no basket. Right. But I'm thinking the foul's going to go against IPFW, but no basket. But I couldn't quite hear. That's either, the only thing I truly understood is no basket. Either that or they're calling on both of them. I, I, because I've seen him do that sometimes. Neither coach had much of an argument, so. Well, I think right now, Dane Fife is more concerned. You know what, you can have the ball, but I don't want you getting the two points. Points are the premium right now. 48-45, 11-29 to play. Well, yeah, they did call foul on DeWitt Scott, but it, they called a foul on, uh, on both of them. They called it on both, because Nick Covington was driving, correct? Two minutes roughing for both sides. Yeah, so they both pick up the arena. Call. <laughs> And Tom Didier did do the national anthem tonight, just like he does at the comic games. Doing a good job as well. As, as always. always. Patton with it. Loses it. And Don's come up with a turnover. Did you notice who was slapping it away there, Pat? Mr. Savely once again. Tell him. He's got the quick hands. Don's trail it by three. Trailed by as many as 13 of the first half. They cut it down to three and a half. Took a couple of leads of two points in the second half. They're now running that motion offense. You notice they're being more patient in the second half, and they've only taken three pointers in nine minutes as opposed to 15 total in the first half. Uh, a little too much mustard on the pass that time. But, Pat, I know I'm beating this horse to death, but that's another unforced turnover. Stop beating the horses, Randy. Okay. Pete is going to call us. Pompey almost with the steal. Pat and fakes the three. Stovall got to keep a man on him. Pajovic may, may as well not have come for this game because he's <laughs> had a miserable night. He's on vacation. He got two points real early and then got two fouls, and then it, he has not been able to get in any kind of flow. And Clint Burst getting ready to come back in for, for Pajovic. Best banging inside. Nice little move. Oh, can't get the little shot to fall. Nice move. It just couldn't fall. I don't know how that stayed out. And you see who lost the ball out of bounds again, though, was Fire. He's just, he's having issues this evening. But it's just one of those things when you get in that early foul trouble, then you come in, it's like you, the, your instincts are to try to make up for right. lost times, and then you, you're not playing your normal game, and then things just happen with it. And when he just came out, it went, went right past the coach. Didn't dare look at the coach, and the coach didn't look back. I was checking them both out. Savely thought about a three, will drive it in and lose it. He got caught in the land of the Giants there and had to give it up and there's nobody there. Another turnover. I just want you to make note that I didn't say unforced turnover that time. <laughs> three on top and that's a big three. Downs might need a timeout right now. Six points, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but they're just out of sync right now. Dane Fife might want to talk to them. First bucket of the game for Dan Henry, and it's a big one. Lead back up to six. Savely cuts down the lane, off the window, too hard, hit the deck hard. Looking for a foul call, didn't get it. That was a quick shot, though. Didn't run the offense. Stovall with it on top. He had three in a row in this second half. He has been the hot hand. Two of them outside the arc. The other one, he had his foot on the line. And if you notice, Pat, the downs have gone back to man-to-man -to -man now. Patton's shot won't go. Safely again. How many rebounds for him? That number seven. seven. The lead smallest IPFW. guy out there. Three on the way for Pompey. No. Good box out by Weber State. I know Coach Fife's waiting for the media timeout that's going to come pretty soon, but he might want to call one here. Patton underneath the scoop shot. Yeah, he's calling one right now. The lead is back up to eight. We will 
take a timeout with 8.48 to play. Don's trail it by eight. You're watching Hold on a second. Third. Let's see if it's going to be a 30 or if it's going to be a full. Hold on, folks. 30 second timeout. Just 30 so we'll stay here. here. Sorry, I get a little over anxious. Excited. 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 It's exciting. It's really been a very good ball game. It really has. Don's all of a sudden finding time down eight, Pat. The shooting percentage once again is slipping. Down to 32 percent at 53 percent for. Um, for Weaver State. That's a big difference. I don't know where, you know, the Don's rebounding very well. 28 to 20, leading the rebound battle. And now I think they're going to make this a pull, but I think uh, we're too late to take this break because they're going to be back in about 35 seconds anyway. So we'll just keep it here for this. Don's 14 out of 43. They've taken two more shots than Weaver State, but it's not falling right now. Of course, uh, we want to encourage you to watch the games on UPN Fort Wayne, but more than that, we'd like to see you out here yeah. in person. I know we had 9,000 here for the Notre Dame game. A lot of people saw a great game. Don really could use your support. You see the phone number there on your screen. Call 481-6000 if you would like to get tickets to an IPFW game. Next home game for the Dons, by the next way, year. is not till next year, January 5th versus Longwood. The Dons will uh, travel to Penn State next Wednesday. Then New Year's Eve, they're going to celebrate with the Air Force <laughs> out in Colorado. Of course, that was no party last year against Air Force. No, Air Force runs that uh, Princeton-type offense, all those backdoor cuts. <laughs> It's tiring looking at it. You know, you feel like you're getting beat up. I can't imagine playing again. All right, following the, fi the five timeout, eight point game. Let's see what play they run here. You know, he called the play out of the timeout. Let's see if they run it properly. You want to go back into best. And then two Carruthers for the jam. Yeah, I think Coach Fight's happy right now. You know, when you when you call the play and you see the kids execute it perfectly like that, I mean, you can't get a higher percentage shot than a dunk. The young coach <laughs> drawn it up on the board. And then the defense inside, we're going to have a foul. I that was pretty good defense. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny when you, I know you've had this experience with uh, talking to Coach Fife, too, when he talks about, you know, the kids and the kids. And I'm thinking, man, you're not much older than they are. <laughs> 25 at the start of the year, 26 now. Of course, by the end of the year, he'll be like 35. <laughs> In dog years, yeah, he's feeling it, you know. He's aging this year, he's told me that. Dan Henry with a free throw. Scoreless in the first half, hit a three-pointer. Here's the drive, and here's the foul. Yeah, best got him, just a light tap on the arm. Zelko Edrick gonna check in for Justin Hawkins. Almost running right into our cameraman there, Trey Hester. Called Trey Essex. <laughs> no, he's playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Trey's put on about 100 pounds since high school, by the way. So he is a, he's a big man. He is a big man. Great kid, dude. Glad to yep. see him doing well for the Steelers. And got a Northwestern education. Not a bad deal. Football's a good thing for him. Don's save it from going out of bounds. That wasn't a pass from best to uh, Edgewood. Still got nine, nine on the shot. shot. With Scott with five on the clock. Yeah, get something up now. Down to two. He'll get it off. Won't go. And Burris with a rebound. Eight point game. Seven and a half to play. Can't afford to fall behind by much more than this. Pat with a drive. Got too far under the basket. Edgerich with the rebound. And there's what the coach, there you saw what the coaches told us before the game, Pat, that Patton's going to try to dunk the ball as often as he can. And he could have laid that in. He tried to dunk it. It got rejected by the rim. Carruthers with it on top as we near the seven minute mark. Q right side against Patton gives up five inches to him. Edgerich wisely gives it back to Carruthers. Q going to put up the three on top. No rebound. Pulled down by Henry. Except for the one play out of the timeout, the Dons haven't run the offense well the last two times. We'll have a timeout called by Weaver State, but just a 30. They say 30. Yeah, they say they <laughs> said that last time too, but I think this is just going to be a 30. I think he wants to make sure right now, Coach Cravens, that his team sticks with it. Eight point lead. It's pretty good with 6.43 to go. Dons really, I'll tell you what, if they fall behind double digits, Pat, you know, psychologically, that's such a huge barrier. The one thing they can't afford right now, and I think Weaver State wants to make sure that it gets off a good shot on this possession and get it to that double digit lead where the Dons have to play.
play the good defenses. Be interesting. Let's see if they come out of the break here and uh, they go back to the zone defense. They've been playing man the last two times down after being very successful in the zone. But sometimes after a while, you stay in that defense and the other team adjusts to it and they hit, what, three or four uh, jump shots against it, which usually works best against the zone. We've, we've talked about the difficult schedule for IPFW. Their first 10 opponents, a combined record of 66 and 29 on the season. Very impressive. Over and back. And now we've got the timeout. It's a full timeout. We will take it. We'll be back after this break. You're watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Oh, yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sidelines, and it's up. If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back once again, uh, while we were away, Don's turned it over in three seconds. <laughs> And what kind of turnover was it, Pat? It was an unforced turnover. Thank you. After I'll, Weber I'll State gave him one. Horse for you. <laughs> 6.20 to play. It's an eight-point game. Don's had an opportunity there. Let it slip away. Let's see if they can make up for it defensively. Can't see much of the action. I'm going to start watching the TV. The coach stands right in front of me. <laughs> he is a line of sight kind of coach. Pat and trying to back a man down. Over best, and if that one fell, that would not be a good sign for the Dons and Zelko with a rebound. And Burris really scrapping though. Yeah, you know, I like the, the effort that Burris brings off the bench. Uh, we mentioned Pajovic with all kinds of trouble tonight. Dons uh, have not been able to solve Mr. Burris, though he's really given them yeah, good but minutes. That's their seventh team foul now on Weber State, and Zelko is going to go to the line and shoot a one and one. Z's given the Dons some good minutes tonight. He's really played well. He's done a good job in there. Still learning the game, making strides. Does have three rebounds to go along with that one free throw and missed that one. Just you just can't can't do that. You got to make those free throws, especially down the stretch. He was three out of four coming into the game, but just one out of three tonight. You know that, especially when you miss the front end. All right, Patton with the reverse two-handed stuff. I can do that on a seven-foot rim <laughs> and a trampoline. <laughs> It's back up to 10, 57 47. That's that psychological barrier. Great pass by Z inside the best for the Deuce. Don's needed that bucket. Justin Hawkins getting set to check back into the game. Patton going to go to the line. Or is it before the shot? Before the shot. You could see him, Pat, when he got the ball at the free throw line, he just got this little look on his face, and he turned, and he's like, I'm just going in there like a ball in a china shop, and I'm going to try to ram this thing through the rim. He likes the highlight. Yeah. He must be a big ESPN viewer. Because <laughs> you know what they say, what are the only things that get on dunks and threes, right? That's right. Patting over to Burris. Riggs has been quiet. They get it to him now, and he'll go to the line for two. Oh, I don't know. That's, that was a sort of a late call. Oh, he got it. On, he, Carruthers was like, what did I do? I was just standing there, and they didn't call on Quentin Carruthers. They did call it on Tyler Bell. 
That's four on him. As you can see, hey, he got him right across the arm. That was a great shot by our crew there. He got him right across the arm. Riggs free throw is good for his 14th point. That's right at his average. There's a difference. Making the free throws. Don's had a chance to score a couple points on free throws at the other end. Couldn't make it. And bounces around, gets them both. He's now got 15 points. 59-49, lead back up to 10. Five minutes to go, still time for the Dons, but they don't have much time to waste. Got to get it below double digits when they get to that next media timeout, Pat, which is going to be in about a minute or so. DeWitt Scott struggled with just seven points tonight. Of course, he's the streaky kind of player. Yeah. He gets one or two to fall, they really start falling. Best really working hard against Burris, and he'll get paid off with the points. Man, he is back and down. 14. By, by the way, Pat, the Dons need to start shooting some threes now. Only taking five three-pointers in the second half after 15 in the first half. Burris with it in the corner on top to Pat. Does he think for, does he think jam when he's at the top of the key? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Need a defensive stop. Need to string a couple of them together. Stovall going to be blocked nicely by Scott, but Patton in that double dribble. I thought he dribbled it twice. But the shot clock didn't reset. It's going to run out. There you go. That was uh, DeWitt Scott with the block there. That was horrible recognition, though, once they got the ball back, Weaver State. And the coach is saying it's his fault that he should have yelled out that uh, the shot clock didn't reset. The ball never hit the rim. All right, lead is eight, chance to cut it to six or five. Carruthers in the lane, kicks it out. Hawkins, this will be a big three, but it won't go. Well, he was wide open. That was a great play by Quentin Carruthers to drive and dish. He had it right on, but just a tad long. And he could just hear the crowd holding its breath as that shot went up, just hoping that it was going through. Patton, he's thinking dunk. <laughs> There's going to be a foul on DeWitt Scott. We have a break in the action. It's an eight-point game. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back. You're watching IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus. Huh? Allium Sepa. Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Free throw line, David Patton has played very well in the second half. He's got 10 points and eight rebounds. He's at the line. Problem right now for the Don's Pat. Tyler Best and DeWitt Scott, two of their best players, four fouls apiece. That's just two of their problems. Right now, the biggest problem is staring them on the scoreboard. 60 to 51, nine point deficit, three and a half to play. And by the way, Scott went to the bench now with the four fouls. I'll try to save him a little. And Cal Savely back in the lineup. D.J. Posley hasn't been back out there after having a good first half and a good start to the second half. Weaver State 9 of 11 from the free throw line. 
Don's 12 out of 17. Been there more often, but haven't cashed in as much as they would have liked. Carruthers the rebound underneath, but then he's going to be blocked by Riggs. Savely keeps it alive. Now it's Carruthers, and he'll get the dude. Oh, I spoke too soon. It curls Ooh. off the rim. But they call the foul. Oh, I thought that one was down. Yeah, I don't know how that's the, that's another one. It's like, oh, they call goaltending. I think somebody hit the net. Okay, so it should have been it. <laughs> that's huge. That cuts it back to eight, three minutes to go. Don's right in. There you see him again. You know, it almost looked like, yeah, you see how he hit it right yeah. there. Burris. It almost looked like her other stepped out of bounds there, too. Pretty close play. All right, leads back to eight. Defensive stops. Weaver State would like to use some clock. Riggs not thinking that way. He'd take the two instead. Shooters don't know about a clock, Pat. <laughs> Warwick Riggs now with 17. He leads all scores. And it's back up to 10 points. He was the man. They knew they had to stop. Best with a nice move, but won't go. Keeps it alive, but steps out of bounds. Another good move. Just couldn't get it to go. Got to make those little shots. Uh, 30 second 30 time second out, so we'll time stay out. here. Dane Fife tried to draw up a 10 point play in the next two and a half minutes. Here's what Scott coming in. The Dons might have to start thinking about fouling, so you got to start looking at, you know, who, who aren't the good free throw shooters on Weber State? You know they're talking about that. Well, Covington's a good free throw shooter, 76%. Henry, 63%, not so hot. Oh, you don't want to follow Riggs. He's an 80% shooter. At just 58, but he's yeah, a couple he, tonight. He made him tonight. Sometimes you have to go by that. Otherwise, they're all pretty much around 70%, so no easy pickings there on the, on the free throw line. And the Dons are going to have to shoot some threes now. They've just gone IPFW in what? Last five or six minutes, gone ice cold. Like my feet. <laughs> yeah, it is a little chilly on the floor. Well, there is ice underneath yeah. there. It's always about, about this point that uh, I'm feeling like I got blocks of ice for this <laughs> Weaver State wanted to use that clock with a 10 point lead. Don, of course, going to put on some heat. Surprise, too, the Don's never went back to that zone in the second half. That could be a five second call right there. Down the lane, and there's the jam for Patton, and that may be all she wrote. He got two tonight. He's calling home right afterwards. It's up to 12 now. Savely not giving up. Fires a three. No good. Riggs is going to be fouled. Huh? I think he walked because he was getting fouled. Yeah, that last jam. We still got almost two minutes to play, but that may have sealed this one. Yeah. The Dons are getting really tired of this. Hey, you know, you guys played well. It was a good effort. Yeah. Bottom line. And you hear that from the coaches and the players all the time. You win or you lose. Fans, fans have the moral victories, not the players. <laughs> That's true. You don't hear the players talking about moral victories, do you? No. But you have to understand with what they're up against coming into this season with practically an entirely new team, practically a team with almost no college experience with a few exceptions. Yeah. Yeah, well, the two. Two exceptions. Yeah, the Justin Hawkins and Carell. And learning to play Division One basketball right. is a difficult thing, and it's especially if you had some experienced guards. You know, it's like yeah. that, that's the one thing. If you, you got to have someone who's been in the fray to calm the other guys down and trying to do that with basically three freshmen. Well, let's not forget, they're playing a schedule that's very difficult. DeWitt Scott will knock down a three. Quick timeout, and they're calling another 30-second timeout. Check and see how many they have left. They still have a couple more. But, uh, yeah, you know, Pat, we're not looking for excuses here for IPFW, but you look at reasons, I mean, you know, they, they played Loyola Chicago, a team that beat Purdue by 15 points, okay? Valparaiso, a team that's in the NCAA tournament all the time. Michigan State, she only voted the number one team in the country by Sporting News. <laughs> Toledo out of the MAC, always good. Illinois State out of the Missouri Valley. Alma mater of Doug Collins, also a very good team. Kent State out of the MAC, Notre Dame, Purdue. Yeah, we, that's a tough schedule for Duke. Right. We, we mentioned that the record of the first 10 opponents this year, 66 and 29, that includes Purdue, which 
is having a struggling year, but still playing a team right. like Purdue for a team like IPFW. Mm -hmm. their, their next four games are teams of 25 and 10. Yeah, so I was it's just going to that. Easier. Yeah, and if you throw out tonight's, there's something like uh, 20 and four. That was a unique call. <laughs> 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 okay, I, should we share? We have to share this with the viewers, but, but Coach Craven just gave us this look and started laughing like, that was an offensive foul. I don't know how they called it on uh, Kyle Savely. Well, that's where, uh, <laughs> that's why he turned around. He didn't want the rest to see him laugh. <laughs> Savely a little off balance, and uh, this young man, as you can see on the television screen right now, very solidly put together young yeah. man. And he's had, a, honestly, I think he has been the difference in this ball game. Covington was tremendous, especially in that first yeah. half. 13 points, now 14 after the free throw. Pat, you have to admit, though, you're, you're going to remember that move by Coach Craven. Yeah, that was nice. I like to see that, though. Ooh, with the left hand, very nicely done by Grant Pompey. They're safely stealing the ball. Pompey picks it up. Oh, don't go. You know, at that point, I think he should have backed it out and taken a three. And there's another steal. Got to shoot threes now. Save we got fouled going to the basket. Well, those two are cat quick. The no give up in this team, too. And I think the no giving up, Pat, wouldn't you agree, very reflective of the head coach? Because that's how team fight played every game. No doubt about that. And it's, you, you know it's got to be killing them inside. Oh, inside, you know, we had to somewhat expect it, but at the same time, expecting it and living it. Yeah, yeah. You look at the stat line for Kyle Saver. 1.8 rebounds. Yeah, this for a guy who's maybe 5'10 and a half. Maybe 5'10 and a half. Only one assist tonight, though. That's a surprise. Making it respectable again. That's it to eight. That was almost five second count trying to get it in. Quick foul. DeWitt Scott just fouled out there. That's his fifth. Dane Fife will probably take the full minute before he makes a change. So Scott will fall out with 10 points. Five fouls, five rebounds. A couple of three pointers, three out of 10 from the field. Just and, one assist for DeWitt. And another, well, he's not an assistant. He really is. Again, the one thing when I look at his stat line, he just shot too many three pointers. Two out of five he means he only, he's only five from two point land. And he's very effective when he drives to the basket. Bounds have to hope. Luda State misses some free throws, but that's something they have not been doing tonight. They have knocking them down in Stovall. Does it again? And again, you know, most of their guys shoot minimum 70 percent. They are 13 out of 16 tonight, and they do get one miss. Nine-point lead. Have yeah. to shoot another three here. I think. Pompey hoping to go in and dish it out. Save will get the two. We've got a timeout. Another 30. Another 30. I thought they were going to take a full this time. I didn't think they had any 30s. One minute and six seconds to play. Seven point game. Stranger things have happened. It's oh, not no over. Question. You have to you either. Normally, coaches, what they'll do is that with this much time left, you go for the quick steal. You don't get a steal on the first, say, five seconds. You know, by the time they're going to get it to half court, you know, get it across the, the half court stripe, then you foul somebody. But you have to go for the steals first. You just can't let them keep shooting free throws. Because even if they keep making two and you get a three every time, they take an awful lot of possessions to catch up, and I don't know if there's enough time left for them. Again, coming up after our broadcast tonight on UPN, Everybody Hates Chris. I've got my VCR set. Watch it every week. All right, here comes the foul. He's got the eight seconds. Riggs is looking for the shot. Will go, but he does get the foul. Hit his no, head on Pat, the they call the charge on me. He's going to have a headache after that one. So that's a break for the Dons. They used 11 seconds off the clock, but they got the ball back, and Weber State didn't score. If you can hit three now, all of a sudden it's a four-point game. There you see the great position by G, Justin Hawkins. <laughs> Kind of an ill-advised shot there with the... Uh... Yeah, but, you know, you, you got a layup. You think you're going to make it. Didn't exactly have the layup. <laughs> 
He was pretty close. <laughs> close? <laughs> no, I mean, he was close to the basket. Right. He wanted to take the shot. Savely fakes the three, gets the drive. We got a game. 69 64, 43 seconds to go. Almost got a steal, and now they'll get the foul. A smart foul. <laughs> Little Savely hanging on for dear life. I'm serious. From, from the first time I saw him practice, I was like, man, I just like watching him play. He he's is, just a lot of fun out there. And to, to think of what he'll become right. in time, he's just learning to play at this level. Well, he's told me that he plays a lot of street ball in the summer, and he has to remember when he's playing in a game like this, you know, you can't take so many chances. He tells me, Dane Fife, will remind him of that throughout his four-year career at IPFW. <laughs> Big free throw, and it's no good. That leaves the door open, because if it's a six-point game, that's Still a two-possession two game. I think this is interesting, too, how Weaver State not putting anybody in the line for the rebound. And gets one out of two, but as you said, a two-possession game, it's six points. 38 seconds to go. Dunst. Almost turned it over in the backcourt. Duns need a three and almost threw it away. Riggs can really get in the with air. the ball right now. Getting a little sloppy with the ball. 31 seconds to play. Like to run a nice play, get a quick three. You know, they're giving the Dons a two right now, Pat. If you've noticed the defense, they're coming way out top and just they don't want IPFW to take the three. Save oh. me. Gonna drive down the lane, looking for a foul, didn't get it. Now that was a bad decision by Savory. Quentin Carruthers set a pick for him. He had an open three-pointer. You have to take that shot. He's going inside thinking, well, I can make a basket and draw a foul. No, they're not gonna follow you at that point. They're gonna give you the two because it doesn't matter. You have to take the three-pointer there. Dane Fife's telling him that right now because Kyle Savory just fouled out. And he knows, he knows he made the mistake. He's had a lot of success the last couple of possessions driving to the basket, but you're right, at that in that time. They're giving you the two there, though. Take the two. All right, Don's hoping for a couple of misses. And they got the first one. By the way, Jakari Johnson coming in for Kyle Savely is uh, the Don's getting a little thin right now with all these guys following out. Dan Henry, chance to make it really difficult if he makes this free throw. If not, Don's still have a glimmer of hope. Second one is good. So it's a seven point game. It's going to take at least three possessions. And the Don's running out of options about now. Here comes a three. Someone's got to shoot it. Posley will take it and gets it. That was Pompey. Oh, Pompey, sorry about that. Another time out here. Full we'll have a out. full timeout. It's a four point game with 15 seconds to go. You're watching IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The STOP band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, STOP. Just hitting the free throw is Stovall makes it a five point game. 14 seconds to go. So it took him less than a second to get a foul. And Stovall with two clutch 
free throws. Another timeout. 30 second timeout. We'll keep it here. 73 67. But again, Pat, we're looking at a six point game, and that, that decision by Kyle Savely, where he passed up the three, where Quentin Carruthers set the pick for him. You know, as a coach, you'd rather see the missed three there. Because right. he drove in, there was nobody near him. He was looking for somebody to hit him so he could get a three point play, and nobody got near him, and he threw up an air ball. You'd rather have the missed three from him. You got, you know, you literally, you had to have a three point shot at that. Dunst down by six. They need a quick three and then a steal or a foul and two missed free throws. So. Yeah, a lot of luck. That's a.